Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a short healing guide for Dresseron as a Restoration Shaman. This is the third boss in Dark Heart Ticket. I didn't think this one is that hard to heal through, but I got several requests to do this video, so here we go. First and foremost, watch the Bread of Corruptions because they're frontals and you don't want to die standing in front of the boss. And watch your tank, they should be fine most of the time, but pumping a few healing surges into them is never going to be a wrong decision. Also note that at this point I already have my Cloudburst rolling so I can collect that tank healing into it and then eventually it's going to pop a little bit later when the downdraft starts. Over here I'm using my Windrush Totem. You don't actually have to use that at all but it just helps a little bit. It's quite a long cooldown so you're probably only going to have one during the fight. In this case I don't care and I just drop it on the first down draft to help everybody a little bit but if you know that at some point you might be struggling a little bit or you might be far away from the dragon while this happens you can save it and use it at that point. So next the first down draft happens and you probably already know this but it's very important to stay as close to the boss as possible because the pushback is weaker there. During the pushback you're basically limited to only casting your Riptides because you have to move forward but there are a few tricks that you can use to help yourself. The first one is Nature Swiftness and I'm gonna pop this in just a moment. I'm using it here because if you use it now you're gonna have it for every other phase or so the third down draft, the fifth down draft and so forth. And you can combine this with either a Chain Heal or if you have a lot of Riptides rolling, which is not the case right now because this is the first one, you can use your Primordial Wave and use the Nature Swiftness with your Healing Wave. The other big resource of course is Cloud Burst. If you time this correctly, you can pop it either during the phase or after it ends to heal up the Earth Shaking Roar. And then you can use the rest of your cooldowns to the side because your final goal is after the downdraft ends, which is 8 seconds long, to have everybody topped up to full health in the 4 seconds window before the earth shaking roar lands after that. Over here for this down draft I drop my healing tight totem which is probably not the best first choice. But that combined with the nature swiftness and the cloud burst totem is more than enough to keep everybody at full health. Keep in mind that you can start casting with about 2 seconds left in the down draft to get pushed back intentionally. As you want to build some distance and bait the earth shaking roar which unfortunately did not drop on me in this case. But it was a no danger on this plus 24 tyrannical as everybody had enough health after the healing tight totem and the cloud burst combined with the chain heals that you can start casting just as the downdraft is ending. You have plenty of time to heal the earth shaking damage and then prepare for the next downdraft. Over here as you can see I already have my cloud burst rolling. And I'm casting Stormkeeper with the idea to combine this with Ancestral Guidance once the downdraft starts. Sending the lightning bolts on the move and then continuing with the Riptides is going to be enough to carry this phase and this is extremely powerful if you pull whelps on top of the boss intentionally or unintentionally. As in that case you can press Chain Lightning and this is going to be enough to carry the whole phase. Over here all the healing is again gathered into the cloud burst. I'm gonna finish up with a chain heal at the very end and then I'm going to bait again far from melee for the earth shaking roar. This time I'm also unlucky. A little bit of confusion here because the tank decides to turn the boss around so I go into the wrong direction etc. But here again you have plenty of time to get into position and heal everybody to full before the downdraft. Now I did get into position a little bit late here, I dropped my cloud burst late, so at the end of this phase I decided to pop my ascendance just to help out a little bit with healing and top everybody up for the earth shaking roar. And I didn't have to do that here, but if everybody is low before the roar you can also drop your spirit link totem to keep them alive. Few more things to mention, you can actually use your spirit walkers grace for a whole phase and spend those 8 seconds of downdraft casting. In this specific run I panic pressed it I think at the very first downdraft but as I said if you save that you can use that for a whole phase alone. And then the other big thing that I didn't utilize much over here is you can actually use your primordial wave during the downdraft and then use the healing wave to top everybody up after it's over. Also don't forget that you have your own defensive, I popped that at some point I didn't have to. But definitely keep in mind that that's an option for you and if you get to a point where the earth shaking roar is going to one shot you, you'll need to run the spirit wolf and get into ghost wolf form in order to survive it. 
I would also pop my Ancestral Guidance for the first down draft so it comes back later for a longer fight although we did kill the boss quite quick in this run. Same for the Spirit Walker's Grace and I'm also going to be updating the Cloudburst Weak Aura that tells you when to drop the Totem, you can check the description of this video for more information, to actually have a notification for the down drafts. So that's it for this guy, let me know what you think in the comments below and also let me know if you want to see different bosses or different classes for some of the future videos. Thank you very much for watching, bye bye, take care and get out of here.